Let's do some news! My name is Mike B, aka Phony. Today's date is September 6, 2019. And man, do we have some news today. Some, I, obviously some breaking news that literally was just posted like less than an hour ago, I think. Uh, everyone is going to be talking about, everyone is going to be wondering uh, if we have heard about this thing. So I anticipate plenty of people in Discord reposting this throughout the weekend. Hey, did you guys see this thing? No. <laughs> no. Li li living under a rock, right? Cube World officially has a release date-ish. Also, Cube World will be coming to Steam. Also, if you are in the alpha, you're going to get a Steam key. Holy shit. This is a lot. <laughs> A release window, he says, hopefully around end of September or October 2019. I want to remind you guys, it is September. I guess I should also remind you guys that it's also 2019, because some people still fuck that up. So this is coming very, very quickly. Uh, 12 year olds and undergo, what is Cube World? There's, there's a whole generation that has absolutely no idea what, uh, what Cube World is, because they just... I don't know. We're not we're not uh, alive enough <laughs> to actually retain anything related to this. Um, but yeah, no, we we have an we have an official Steam page. You could go and you could wish list it if you'd like. I'm pretty sure the wish list wish listing on this is probably the most that any game has ever seen, uh, and prob we'll probably see that data uh, sometime soon because this is this is a significant thing. No matter how you feel about Cube World and how long it's taken to get to this point. Because even recently, as like yesterday, as a matter of fact, I think I was talking about how uh, I almost feel like the hype is dead because they kept on. Um, the, first, they didn't actually make any kind of announcements or anything for like an extended period of time. Nobody knew what the fuck was going on. Everyone thought that they took the money and ran. Uh, and then and now we've passed up six months or so. We've been getting like pretty constant updates. We had this mage video that you're seeing right now. Uh, mage gameplay video that's like 16 minutes long. Uh, that was released just like last week or two weeks ago. And with that, I was just kind of like, all right, well, there it is. But it's just, it's still, I don't know. It just does it, it, maybe I'm just burnt out on the hype or something. And then they go and totally redeem themselves by putting out a release window. Holy shit, man. Um, just can't wait. Oh, Shizzle's going to wake up. He's going to be like, what? <laughs> Actually, he should be awake right now, but he hasn't said anything yet, which is really weird. So I'm guess I'm guessing, I'm guessing. Um, a server will be up. A server will be up for Discord day one. Thank you, Wooly. Yes, we're gonna have a. Uh, uh, we'll have obviously a Cube World server set up. Um, I'm sure. I'm sure his Twitter is probably blowing up for sure. Uh, Mount say a Cube World release. Mountain Blade Bannerlord release. Half Life Three. When? Maybe soon. Maybe soon. We don't know. I mean, we're approaching on 2020. Like, there's probably gonna be some pretty major announcements of things that are supposed to be happening in 2020. Uh, we've already gotten a few, obviously, uh, before 2020 in this in this case, but uh, man, man, Wild Classic Dead by Fatality by Cube World, and actually, this is a good amount of time for them to. God, look at this! Look at this! The map is so different and shit. That's so good. We'll just leave this up for a minute. Uh, I'm fucking hyped. Yesterday was I was kind of like, eh. I mean, I don't want to you know, get my hopes up because. It's going to take forever for us to get anything out of this, right? And I, now I'm fucking hyped again. God damn it. He keeps playing with my emotions, man. <laughs> Classic WoW is dead now. You better hurry up and get to 60 or wherever you want to get in WoW because that shit is going to be dead for at least, at least several hours. <laughs> Once Cube World releases. So again, I want to remind you that uh, you will, you will be getting a key somehow. Uh, probably to the registered email address, um, if you participate in the alpha. Uh, we know, we know basically nothing else. Everything we know is that it is, it's on the, the Steam page here, which doesn't necessarily give any, much more than stuff we already know. This is all like featured, featured talk, right? Choose between four different classes, we know that. action based combat, we know that. Explore infinite procedure generator, we know that, right? Uh, craft, tame pants, non-linear, discover, blah, 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 blah. Pretty much everything here we already know. Use your hang glider, take the skies, explore the oceans on your boat. We know all these things. 
So we haven't really learned anything necessarily new. Um, <laughs> you can play Cube World Classic right now. That's right, we do actually have a server set up right now. So you want to play Cube World Classic. Oh, look at that fucking Zeppelin. Um, but yeah, I'm fucking hype, dudes. Fucking super hype. Gotta get the band back together. Mike, me, Shizzle, Squishy, Lore. Cube World Adventures returns. I'm down. <laughs> so it's just like Minecraft. <laughs> it crashes a lot. Oh boy. I bought the alpha directly through uh, paying for it with PayPal from the site. I wonder uh, how getting the new version will work. Well, if you bought the game, you you likely registered your email address. Uh, I'm going to guess that's because he doesn't ha necessarily have a ton of um, information about about us, the players, right? The people who bought the game other than our email address. And that's probably going to be the method that he goes uh, through to, uh, to email you keys. Um, as somebody who gets lots of keys in, uh, in my, in my inbox quite often, it's not unusual for them just to just send you a key. Just to send you a key, be like, hey, thanks for participating in the alpha, here's a key. Um, I guess now we should probably speculate on just how popular Cube World release is going to be. What do you guys think? Is it gonna be tons of day one hype? And then, uh, and then fall off? Lots of people said that about, about Classic. Yet Classic is still going pretty fucking strong. Uh, maybe some, some influencers or whatever you want to call them, content creators have fallen off because they realize that classic is hard. Um, but this is a different, this is a different, uh, story here. Mods will be key. Yes. Yes. Mods will absolutely be key, uh, in this. If we get, I mean, if we get regular release and then workshop support later down the line, that's going to be pretty fucking massive. Um, it doesn't have to be workshop support, just fucking mods and just in general. Uh, day one hype, hi, day, day one hype drop off in a week. Probably. Yeah, probably gonna be a good significant amount of people that are gonna, uh, fall off after a certain amount of time. But, um, oh man. Oh man. I wonder if they kept the, the, uh, pixel gemming type thing. You guys remember that? Where you can actually take, like, a weapon that you had acquired or crafted or whatever, and if you, you could attach, like, a gem of sorts, right? It's basically like a pixel or a, 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 a voxel, and you can attach it anywhere you want on the weapon. And so remember, we were, we had, like, shields... And we would put like designs on them using our gems, or we would like put like a giant like phallic. <laughs> yeah, hopefully all that shit's still in it because I, that that stuff I really enjoy about the game is just like oh, just put my gems anywhere, just stick it right here, boop. Um, well, I probably knew that if he released it only on his site, that uh, his site would implode on release day. Absolutely, Nervosa says I'm interested in trying it out, but it never grabbed me and, and understood the hype. If it is, if it has a ton of crafting and player built stuff, I would be interested. Player driven content is the best. Uh, I will tell you that there's not a whole lot of player driven or player created structures or anything in the game. Probably none, actually. Um, most of everything is, it's mostly RPG stuff. Think about it kind of like, uh, uh, like an open world Diablo type thing where you, like, you don't, you, you can customize your character with gear and all that shit, but you can't necessarily like build anything. Um, and like that, that's, that's, that has any kind of permanence. Uh, like, like you can in, in Terraria or Minecraft or, or stuff like that. Uh, you can't even like really dig through the ground actually, uh, unless that's changed and, and we'll see maybe. But, uh, but yeah, as far as I know, you can't even, you can't like dig through the ground or anything like that. Um, most everything that you see is static. I know that's jarring for folks that put a lot of time into Minecraft. Maybe you never played Cube World, but Cube World, uh, has always been, um, uh, mostly about the, the combat being so fluid. Trove try to make you basically rip off the formula and try to make it happen, but their combat was just not good. Uh -huh, or their, yeah, their combat was just not nowhere near as good. Uh, housing is planned, yeah, so, but for the get-go, though, you can't, don't really rely, don't, don't think that there's gonna be structures and all that stuff that's gonna be in the game. Um, well, I said years ago that you want players to be able to build a house. Yeah, 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 exactly. Uh, his website is still online right now. He probably doesn't really have anything to serve on it other than a couple images or whatever's on the front. Page just has a good rundown of all the features. There you go. So you could go through and look at that. Like pick Rama, Cube World. Um, but yeah, this is um pretty significant news. Let's actually go ahead and open up his uh his site here. Pull this up. Uh and it, it says da 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 and endless randomly generated. Okay, so infinite worlds, no borders, landscapes, world map, landscape greenland, so all the different types of biomes, lava lands, uh, which I don't believe lava lands in this form form where we had lava in uh in alpha right i don't remember there being lava lands could be wrong though uh but lots of biomes actually mushroom swamp undead savannah uh so many so many so many adventure climbing swimming diving hang gliding sailing there were okay um reason that he wanted to add something in a future update so that confirms he plans updating for that to release well we'll see how frequently that is 
But uh, yeah, here we go. Hang gliding, sailing, dungeons, overworld, dungeon portals, missions planned. Is procedural quests planned? Background story planned? Housing. So a couple things in the planned area. Class is infinite. You could go through and read all this if you want. There's lots of shit here. Skill tree. The skill tree is pretty basic, but but also still pretty good for how basic it is. <laughs> but yeah. Ah. Woo. So yeah, Cube World coming. Uh, sometime within the next, hopefully, two months. He's getting rid of the skill tree. No, uh, did he say that somewhere? That'd be a little disappointing because the skill tree is pretty fun to play with. Like it's actually got a couple of good skills in there for a uh, customizer character. Uh, so yeah, unconfirmed. But we'll see. Um, Q world. Now you see if I can log into a while. <laughs> yes, you should be able to log into a while now. Everyone, 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 no one's playing. They're all waiting for Q world now. Um, so yeah. Yeah, dudes, that's, uh, that's your breaking news. Oh, man. So. <laughs> there's nothing else to talk about, q -World. It's just It's coming soon, guys. Uh, and that's it. So, we will, um, we will uh, follow up as we get more news. But just make sure that you go through and add it to your wish list and follow. Don't necessarily jump on trying to buy it because you're supposed to get a key if you already purchased it. I'm sure the majority of you folks who are here right now were part of that initial rush, or at least a good chunk of you guys um, uh, were part of that initial rush uh, that, that actually owned the game, whether or not you played it for like a minute or hours. Uh, so yeah, just uh, stay tuned, check your email, figure out which email you used for that. You, you can do a password retrieval on the site, so that way you can go through and... Uh, See which email that you uh, which email that you have. Uh, was that a, a a needs mimosa? It, it it is a mimosa. Yes, it is. We had some left over, and I felt like today was today. Today is definitely the day to uh, oh a news mimosa. Yes, 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 it is. Yes, it is. Mm hmm. Oh man. Woo! All right, so we have other news to talk about. I had other things planned for today. Before this shit got derailed, uh, I think we should pr probably talk about World of Warcraft Classic. The reason why we didn't do a show last week was because, um, because I was playing World of Warcraft. Sorry. Uh, so was everybody else, including the people that typically make news. <laughs> Basically, everything last week was uh, was pretty much WoW related. Q memes galore. Um, people just experiencing Classic for the first time ever uh and yeah sorry not sorry yeah i'm sorry not not uh and when you weren't playing when you weren't playing world of warcraft uh, you were probably watching world of warcraft related porn uh and warcraft themed porn up searches tripled after wild WoW classic release uh, i went to investigate this myself sure enough there's lots of world of warcraft related pornography on uh, uh on pornhub quite a bit as a goblin fan i was quite satisfied with the selection so, <laughs> even had the same face. It was so weird. I was just like, that looks like my character. What happened? Vicious, vicious fucking warlord. What are you doing? Sucking that thing. Jesus Christ, it's too big for you. Um, <laughs> speaking of... <laughs> All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, listen, listen. <laughs> In other WoW-related news, this may be a familiar face to some of you folks. Uh, if not, this is the face of the world first level 60 in Classic. The dirty, this dirty gnome. Oh, man. At, at, basically, just gnomed everyone. Um, it was a mage. Goes by the name of Joker. Just memeing his way all the way to level 60. And put Method to shame. Even though Method wasn't necessarily racing for World First 60. They're, they're racing for World First uh, Rag. Um, but they just can't escape it. This is a response to... <laughs> <laughs> to just a random tweet. So we're still live in the studio. We've been your favorite part of the broadcast so far. Bam. <laughs> so, yes. Uh, 
The world first 60 goes to uh, uh, Joker. Put a little bit of pressure on Method. Method, if you guys didn't see, Method had a, uh, I don't have any clips or anything, but they had a, 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 a pretty significant amount of production going into their, um, uh, shh, Tarot, fuck, I'm getting there, dude. Uh, they had a pretty significant amount of production going into their, uh, uh, into the streams that they were doing, uh, the race to world first, rag kill. And so, of course, when you have, when you have a fucking gnome <laughs> memeing its way to level 60, uh, well, it's, it's a bad look. It's even worse when you also lose the fight, uh, the world first rag kill fight to, uh, now in this case, it's a little different. I don't know what that music is. I'm gonna mute that. Uh, but in this case, uh, and actually we should probably pause here. Can you see the levels for these folks? Uh, you can't see them anywhere. So class composition for, um, for this world first rag kill done by a guild. I actually don't know the name of the guild. But they are from, from what I've read, is that they were uh, from a from private. They basically did this in private. Is apes? It's apes. Thank you. Um, uh, they did. They they were a private server guild. So this is something that they were uh, uh, they were pretty skilled in in terms of like you know dealing with this kind of content. Uh, they brought in uh, down down to like level fifty seven. I think were some of the the lowest level characters they brought into the fight, and they cleared it. And, uh, yeah, there's, I know, there's, there's lots of comments saying, oh, it's already been beat. Is it 55? Is it 55? I only saw 57 on the list. But, uh, I believe in response, Method, uh, released a, uh, what did they say? They said, world first in the West, I think. I think it went from world first to world first in the West, uh, to exclude certain other regions. Uh, that were unverifiable, like China, for example, I guess, uh, was one of the things that they, uh, uh, they were trying to avoid because there was no way to monitor, uh, I guess, Chinese service progression. So they said that they were the, um, uh, they were still in the running for world first in the West and, uh, and then this happens. So, so yeah, um, yeah, world first at doing 15 year old content. Yes, yes, yes. They do love their, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And and some people are saying, yeah, Terrell, some people are saying that this version of Rag is undertuned. Um I I would be inclined to agree with that. I mean, I don't know what the actual stats say. I don't know uh if uh, what has actually changed. So I don't know if that's true. Um but I mean, I feel like a level <laughs> fucking a, a, a raid composed of everything from level 55 to 60 um downing Rag pretty fucking quickly is uh uh, well, it just seems, it seems like, yeah, maybe. So patch 1.12 had rag nerfs, so there you go. Maybe that's, maybe that's the case, is that it was just, it, we, we remember a time when it wasn't, um, when, when, uh, it was more difficult, or something. Who fucking knows? But at the same time, who fucking cares? Who fucking cares? Uh, it's, you're not, you're not, you're not going up against rag. You're still, you're still trying to make your way through Thousand Needles, all right? You're still trying to make your way through STV. So, who cares? What these guys are doing. They made, they raced, they raced to first. They got it. Congratulations to them. I'm, I'm satisfied with their satisfaction. Uh, and I think it's great. Some people look at it as like a competition. Race the world first this, race the world first whatever. Um, and they managed to uh, do it within a week. Yeah, that's right. Within a week's time. I actually, I doubted Guns. Guns made the... Uh, Guns Games, which most of you guys know, uh, he uh, made the prediction saying that he thinks that they're going to down it within within a week, and it was like one day short. It was one day short of a week that they did it, motherfucker. Uh, I seriously did not believe that. I was just like, no, I believe like ten days or something like that. But I just didn't believe that they would get it like within seven days. I guess I just I just didn't take into account the perhaps or maybe it was undertuned or maybe these guys have been doing it for fifteen years. But at the same time. I don't give a fuck because their world first isn't going to stop me from getting ganked in, uh, in STV. It's just not going to have any impact on my life whatsoever. But I think it's awesome. Good for them. And also, wow, that really sucks for Method. That's a lot of sponsorship money that went into that production uh, only to not get what you sought to do. And, uh, well, they didn't get world first 60. And they didn't get world first. Did they get any world first while they were streaming? I mean... I feel for Method because they're trying to put on a show and they put up, they brought up all these, they, they obviously were, were bringing in money to, uh, uh, to support this production, uh, cause the shit ain't free. 
and they just didn't get anything. Yeah. Yeah, that's rough. That's pretty fucking rough. Now, uh, they also took down Onyxia in the same week as well. Yeah, I don't have the clip of that, but um, yeah, it's basically just content cleared. The game's been beaten. Yo, oh, just uninstalled now. Uh, they got world first failure to complete any objectives. Aww. <laughs> Uh, uh, Method was not pushing world first. Uh, they were not pushing world first. They were not. Oh, I thought when it said race to world first, they meant that they were going to be pushing for world first. Um, what do you mean, Narvosa? Uh, just accusations around account sharing. I wrote, that's right. I did see that. Uh, Joker had made a, a joke about having his brother play or something like that. And somebody clipped that out of context, sent it over to, uh, um, to the, uh, the casters over at, uh, uh, and I don't know who said it. I only know Bay on the casting thing, and I'm not sure if he was the one that said it or whatever, but somebody took that as, oh, we have confirmation that, uh, that, uh, there's account sharing going on, but it's a family or something to that effect, uh, is what he said. But obviously he just did it to fucking troll everybody, and, um, but some people took it as, uh, well, I don't think really anybody took it as, uh, as, as, oh yeah, he's, he's account sharing. I think most everybody knew better. But in the heat of things, you know, when you're sent a clip, I guess they probably should have commented on it, but it happens. Uh, they Method would argue that their production is the overall race to world first, not specifically Method or its members hitting world first. Oh, they wanted to market their media org looking to increase their presence. Ah. So you're saying that race to world first, they didn't really meant for them, they meant in general? That's an interesting spin. We'll take it. Other issues that have been plaguing World of Warcraft this week, <laughs> besides the Q, uh, which has kind of died down this week a little bit, but you still have. There is still a Q. Um, one of the other issues that popped up where people were uh, people are complaining about uh, layering being exploited so that people can farm uh, rare materials. And Blizzard has come out and said that we've been mon monitoring players' use of layers, and we agree that we should add a delay between subsequent layer transfers. Under the hood, we have all these controls that talked about on Reddit AMA before launch, a few secret weapons we haven't discussed publicly, and we are working on deploying some additional controls to further restrain layering for being exploitable. However, we also want to assure you that the issue is a much smaller problem than some people are claiming. We've been closely monitoring the effect layering has, has having on economies and other aspects of the game, and many of the stories we see posted are wildly inaccurate. And it even even right below, they have this system. They have this uh, nice little feature here that shows you related things. You click on this: is layering export is real. A guy has one hundred sixty thousand gold in arcane crystals. Layering is throwing the economy. How the layer export suspensions will go down. Layer dumping disclaimer: We need a blue response. Everyone's freaking out, and they're coming out. And they're saying it's all bullshit. They've they've gone through and they've verified that these uh, claims that people are are are, are hoarding uh, items by by exploiting the layering system is false. It's fucking false. Um, some of you may not believe this, though. <laughs> uh, they use poor marketing by saying, oh, okay, so, so uh, sorry, I'm sorry, we moved on. Uh, but your text is still going to be in the VOD. Uh, layering was used for Joker to get world first. Final push super quick. Uh, I, you know, I watched, I watched his, uh, his last hour or so. I didn't necessarily see anything that looked like he was, uh, exploiting anything, but I mean, it's possible that he was switching layers or something like that to get better spawns or something. Uh, at the same time, he was like fending off idiots trying to gank his ass like 20 levels under him because he had leveled so quickly. But, um, but yeah, regardless, uh, they're saying that there's not, there's basically no economy destroying exploitation of layers they even said that um uh that most most servers have a low single digit number of layers all realms have a single digit number of layers period though so it's not like there's 15 or 20 layers that people are hopping in between to get certain gear or whatever but um but yeah, so it says, uh, exploiting me, uh, I mean, there was uh, an add-on that was around up until sometime well, Legion called Realm Hop that would find people on other servers in your battle group that would invite, okay, uh, add-ons for it no longer works, okay. Uh, at least the gold spammers haven't started spamming in trade chat yet, that's actually, uh, 
Uh, no, I saw a couple. <laughs> There's been a few, actually. Uh, somebody actually looked into it and they saw that. Uh, what was it? It was like some stupidly low amount of gold for 500 bucks. I wish I could remember how much gold it was because it was like, I mean, it was a lot in classic terms, but overall it was just like, it was massively overpriced. It was like, what, 100 gold or something like that for 500 bucks or some shit? It was, it was just, just so, it's completely stupid. Um, there was another bug. Another. There was, there was a bug that they had fixed that uh, I, I believe has assisted a lot of people to getting to, uh, 60 or at least get high level fairly quickly. I don't know anybody personally that that, have, that has used this, but I also don't watch a lot of classic streams. Um, but it says right here, it says, wow, classic hotfix that happened uh, uh, just last week. It said, uh, thanks to player reports of feedback, we've identified a bug affecting how XP was calculated for parties of six or more players. We're rolling out a hotfix right now to all realms that should correct this. Going forward, XP awarded should be significantly lower for parties of six or more players. Again, thank you very much for your feedback. If you remember, uh, or if you just, you know, have played World of Warcraft, when you're in a party, you get a certain split of the, of the XP, right? Whatever that might be. Someone's going to put the math in chat. Um, when you're in a raid, it's significantly less because it has to be. You can have upwards of 40 people or 39 other people helping you farm something for XP. It would be silly if you, if you made any, any amount of, of, of XP that has any kind of value because you could just spam through areas and clear things out. Well, some people I discovered that you were getting more XP than you should have uh, in a raid, and so they were doing uh, various. Uh, it was it was higher than it was supposed to be, uh, Visive. Um, but then they lowered it. If that was your question, uh, it was higher than it was supposed to be. But then they hot fixed it to bring down the the amount of XP you get, so that way people don't go in raids of you know six to whatever to do dungeons and basically spam dungeons all day and get get xp that way and level up uh like that so so yeah there's uh there's been a number of things i've been tackling over the uh over this past week and uh even just recently 10 man xp farming was insane yeah i i didn't see it i didn't see it personally again i don't know anyone that's done it uh you know like i mean the only wow streamers i really know is like towley so and i'm i'm fairly certain he wouldn't have exploited or anything like that that'd be that'd be a bad look um but we also have some character moves because the, the uh, Qs are, because the Q memes are too strong, pretty much. Uh, so yeah, they have actually put out that they're going to be moving, allowing people to move. And actually, they're not going to be. They are allowing people to move from um, uh, high population servers to a set, a designated new realm, on, in some cases, uh, for the larger realms. Uh, see, it's technically the same game. It's basically one of the last versions uh, of Legion and Classic clothing. Uh, so, oh, oh, you're talking about, yeah, 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 okay, I think you're talking about, gotcha, 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 gotcha. Uh, so, this is something that some, some, some folks were not pleased with, was, uh, if you're on White Main, for example, you, uh, are only get to go to Arcanite Reaper, and Fairbanks as well, Arcanite Reaper, you don't get to necessarily choose where you want to go, and so, what, so what happened is, a lot of people who queued up to play on, or have played on White Main, as an example, uh, and then they, uh, they, they're like, you know what? These keys are too fucking strong. I'm just going to go roll on somewhere else and wait for the free transfers to come up. Well, if they rolled on another server, a low pop server, they're pretty much stuck there. Yeah. They don't get a choice. So, uh, it kind of, it kind of ends up screwing those folks who initially still wanted to play the game, but later they're hoping they had a fingers crossed that they'd be able to transfer together to a server that would, uh, uh, support both of them and all their friends without necessarily having such an insane queue. Uh, well, in this case, unfortunately, um, well, <laughs> they can, they can only go to a new server, uh, Arcane Arcanite Reaper. When you uh, when you log in during during uh, high population times, you're gonna get greeted with this. I saw this last night, around like uh, eight thirty Pacific time or so, which is a pretty hot time. That that's I would say it's probably the late the later part where like. A, between like eight and 11, it basically drops to like nothing. Uh, and so this was a 3000 person queue, which is much lower than it was last, last week. It was, uh, like five to 8,000, I think, or 9,000 in some cases for fuck's sake. Uh, so it's much, much less, but you do have a button that pops up. It says free character migration is available for this well realm. Click the button below for more information. I have no idea how this impacts names. The first day 
The first day they said they would only allow, they were not going to allow new folks. They would only allow people to transfer over. But after that first day, I'd imagine if somebody took your name, you're probably gonna have to choose a new one. So if you want to transfer off one of these high population servers onto a low population one, and you're watching this video on YouTube right now, your name might be gone. <laughs> because it's 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 because last night I believe last night or night before is when they stopped uh, or when they started the free free transfers. So it's pretty much already going to be past the twenty four hour window. New new people are going to be uh, or new characters are going to be created, and your name going to be gone. Uh, so yep. Uh, did Blizzard ever give free transfers with free choice? You don't believe so? Uh, Agrimonia, off the top of my head, I don't really know. I couldn't really answer that question. Uh, if they gave uh, people a choice. Uh, so yeah, I can't even speculate on that, but I don't really care what they did before. It'd be nice if they did it in a way that made sense. Now, previously, when you have people that are, uh, rolling on different servers, they want to roll together on servers that have been up and running for, you know, possibly years. Um, I, I don't know if necessarily giving them an option to go to, uh, different servers or whatever would make as much sense as the situation that I've already laid out regarding classic where everybody's rolling new and they can't get in, so they roll new somewhere else, hoping they could roll together, right? So I do feel like, uh, I feel like in this case, it's something they probably should have allowed, but but they didn't, and, you know, it is what it is. Those of us on White Man are hoping that, um, uh, that they, uh, well, that the queue is gonna drop, because people are gonna move, so we'll see. So, yep, uh, can you talk about, you already missed it, you already missed it, Perrin. So, <laughs> sorry, uh, but that's it. So, World of Warcraft Classics out. Everybody's playing it until Cube World is released, and then we'll end that from one world game to another. And then, yeah, wow, fuck. Ah, the closest thing they've done to allowing high pop servers to transfer to low pops, but never the other direction. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, for sure. I just can't remember if it was like a fixed server. They were like, oh, a new server, and that's all you get to go to, so. Um, queues on Fairlina are about 25% lower now. There you go. Uh, so waiting for an announcement on, of Diablo Classic. That will probably, probably be on mobile or something. Then, wasn't there some talk about Diablo, uh, one or two going to Switch or something? Am I tripping? I'm, I'm fairly certain I saw something like that. With, uh, BlizzCon coming up in a month, I guess we'll, 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 we'll resurrect all the, uh, phone memes and uh, go from there. See, I think it was two. It was it was two, not Doom sixty four. D two was is being remastered currently. Supposedly, there you go. Probably tripping testicles. Maybe there's a pretty cool D two mod coming out on official guest. You have a all right, cool. Wild pet battles coming mobile soon. Yes, that's actually the one thing I would not be mad about is if they came out and they said that the wild pet battles are going to be playable on um on uh, uh, uh mobile. That would be awesome. All right, let me prep my next thing here. Oh, man. That, this, all this news so far has been easy and positive and awesome, but now I got to show you guys the... Uh, uh, I, <laughs> all right. So, last... Yesterday? Night, day before? Ugh. No, we're not going to cover the Gamergate shit. We're not going to talk about ZQ's body count. Nothing like that. We're not talking about that. I got too mad about that shit. All right. So, no, Soldier Boy didn't do anything. I believe he's still in jail. I believe. I believe. So, Chris Hansen. Chris Hansen. Let me turn on my fucking fan. <laughs> Chris Hansen is uh, is breaking into streaming, which is weird. Which is weird. For some of you, that might be a bit of a shock. Why? Well, Chris Hansen has been uh, publicly down on his luck lately. Bouncing checks for certain things and whatnot. Uh, so maybe he's looking for another revenue stream so that he can uh, write these checks that he needs to write without worry that they're going to bounce and make headlines again. And he has his eyes set on uh, YouTube streaming. So... There's this guy, his name's Only Use Me Blade, uh, and or he is a, I believe he's an ex, like, CSGO, he's an ex, like, a pro gamer, and he 
had this RV when they were going across. I mean, this has happened several times in the IRL community where they basically rent RV. They get a bunch of streamers together and they basically go like cross, you know, cross states or whatever, wherever they end up road tripping to. And they stream the whole thing and everyone fucking watches and all kinds of shenanigans happens. It's basically road rules 2019, right? Now, as you can expect, plenty of drinking, plenty of drug use, all this stuff happens on these streams and nothing ever seems to stop them from doing it. YouTube doesn't really seem to necessarily uh, step in to say anything or do anything uh, with any, in any of these situations, uh, which is why I tweeted out recently that um, that YouTube, t YouTube, uh, YouTube IRL makes Twitch IRL look like Catholic school because it really truly does. Um, and in this case with it only use me blade, he was uh, accused of allegedly while intoxicated, and he's known to be someone who gets intoxicated on stream under his own volition, uh, allegedly he went back and he uh, sexually harassed or whatever with uh, somebody, a, a female, in the back of the RV. So, so this, this spawned somehow, this somehow got Chris Hansen involved, and Chris Hansen sat down on a Skype call with, uh, with Only Use Me Blade, and that was a very intriguing and very strange discussion. I have a couple of timestamps I'll show you just so you kind of get a feel for what the, uh, how the discussion went. Let me go and pull this up here. What about uh, the DNA? If there is DNA and it's found to be yours, is there an explanation how that would have gotten there? Uh, not on her. Uh, I've never touched her besides a hug. Um, there, there was, when we got to Colorado, there was a time where everyone ventured off and we were having issues with the RV. And I, I admit I'm a male and I pleasured myself solo and no one else around in the privacy of the RV. Um, so there might be some, some like DNA evidence of that, like on like a blanket or something, but nothing having to do with. Did you Gucci's. tell the police about that? Yes, yes, yes. So that's the only way, that's the only way there would be your DNA. In the RV or on. What? <laughs> the discussion is intriguing in that sense all right somehow chris hansen just has he pulls this out of people he somehow gets them to that point of vulnerability where they're willing to openly admit that they jerk off onto a blanket instead of somewhere safe like on their belly or in their hand or in a sock, or I don't know, I don't know, somewhere else. <laughs> but we now know that that is just how uh, Only Easy Blade uh, rolls. Also, during this discussion, uh, his uh, roommate Bjorn TV, another streamer, uh, kept on getting she had admitted that she basically had kept on. Uh, um, well, hold on, hold on, let me go back here. Uh, oh, actually, no, this this is actually, did I get the uh, Bjorn? I did not get drunk Bjorn, it's, it's somewhere else. Um, we just learn more about Mike Beans. <laughs> I'm just I'm just naming places where you could just do it, okay? All right, all right. Wherever you guys do it, it's up to you, okay? Jeez. So it is a very candid interview, probably more so than maybe if only Use Me Blade had a lawyer, more so than he would really appreciate. Uh, but I mean, just to play another clip here for you guys. I'm re reiterating the fact that she had admitted that she had been raped by her father. I had asked her, was it, you know, was it worth it to be on the internet to just say that you were a rape victim? I said that after seven grams of mushrooms when I thought I was out of my mind. That's a fucked up thing to say to somebody. But yes, I did say that. But there is circumstantial evidence here that does not look good for you, Blake. Of course, you know, of course. I mean, the DNA, your own statements, the video, um, you know, your past talk about rape. Um, you know, some violence after you've been drinking. Were you drinking that night? Uh, I had a couple drinks at the bar, but when Gucci's was um, kind of being a handful, uh, I, I, I kind of cut myself off because we needed to get her. We needed to get her back to the RV. We needed to get. So Gucci's is the uh, um, is the alleged victim of this uh, uh, of this incident. Uh, Gucci's also. <laughs> Not allegedly. Um, Gucci's also took off all of her clothes in the middle of a live stream last night 
for some reason and then put on a spider-man outfit and proceed to run around and just do weird shit um i'm you guys are really missing out on a lot when it comes to youtube irl a lot and this doesn't stop it doesn't stop here this is like two weeks old news okay this is like two weeks old news uh <laughs> During this discussion that he that uh, that Chris Hansen had with uh, with Blade, Ice Poseidon pops up. Uh, now Bjorn, uh, QXC, a lot of the, a lot of popular IRL streamers can pretty much thank Ice Poseidon for helping launch their careers essentially in streaming uh, because they were part of maybe a previous RV or something or whatever else. Uh, no, that's Bjork Mo. <laughs> who also did a live interview today, and it was nowhere near as exciting as the shit that I'm showing you guys today, let me tell you. It was cool, because it was Bjork, but it kind of was kind of it. Um, <laughs> so, Ice Poseidon comes up several times, so... Things roll over into, what is Ice Poseidon doing that everybody's talking about him doing all of these things with minors? So, Chris Hansen releases the video. Hold on, whoop, but, but, but. And it's so weird. It's so, this is on his. This is on Chris Hansen's official Twitter channel. Ice Poseidon, modern day streaming shock jock, or is there something more disturbing going on on Discord? Check out my live show Wednesday, 8 Eastern, on my YouTube channel, Hansen vs Predators. All right, I'll be watching. <laughs> All right, I'll be watching. <laughs> Production value, production value, <laughs> production value. <laughs> yeah. So the show is called Hanson versus Predators, and um, he is a uh, Wednesday has since passed, right? Uh, Wednesday has since passed, and on Wednesday they set up to do the show, and unfortunately, shit went, she went. I guess shit didn't work. Uh, Ice did have an opportunity to respond on his own live stream, and I actually I'm not sure how much of this I could show necessarily. So I'm just going to show the part where he responds to it because I think it's very important in the context of this uh, of this story. Because imagine imagine being a streamer, regardless of who you are, and you have Chris fucking Hansen calling you out on Twitter. Okay, so I think it's important that for the context of the story that we at least show the uh the response here i would so actually you guys can just listen how's that because you're right you're right corpse i don't even know what we can show related to him but again context is important i would talk to chris hansen on like a fucking interview level sort of thing or like a, how you doing like i would do a stream with him but i'm not going on his fucking on his channel like i'm not going on his fucking channel i'm not going on a fucking channel that's called hansen versus predator <laughs> okay because that like first of all no i'm not a fucking predator i'm not going on a thing called hansen versus predator if it was called the chris hansen show i'd go on it but since it's not called the chris hansen show it's hansen versus predator i'm not going on his fucking youtube channel if he wants to come on mine and we and wants to talk or about things or whatever that's fine but he either needs to change his fucking youtube channel name or what but but i'm not going on a thing called hansen versus predator so, in Ice's defense, I too would not go on a show called Hanson vs. the Predator unless my name was Hanson. And it's not. So, I would also decline politely whether or not people say I'm dodging or not. I would absolutely not go on a show called Hanson vs. Predator. Uh, <laughs> so, um, so I'm, I'm, I'm with Ice on that. Uh, now, there was a call that took place between uh, Chris Hansen and Ice Poseidon prior to the stream. Um, and it took place over Skype. And I guess they discussed a bunch of things. And that same day when this episode was supposed to, to, supposed to launch, go live, everything went poorly. Hey guys, Chris Hansen here. I just did an entire live program that you did not see on my YouTube channel here, Hansen vs. Predators. I think there was a hacking issue and some other technical difficulties. The topic, Ice Poseidon. Paul Danino, who, as you know, is a 
is a very popular and famous streamer, but also very controversial. Um, we had some clips of, uh, of ISIS that I played and uh, commented on. We also uh, talked about a conversation I had earlier today with ICE, which was, um, you know, pretty straight up and, and forward. He did not want to appear on tonight's show for a number of different reasons. Um, but he was very honest that uh, he was changing directions a little bit with his content. And he thought uh, trying to steer away from like, you know, inappropriate conduct with minors. That's what that's what I was probably saying. So I'll just leave this up for a minute. But here's what happened. The day of this show on Wednesday. Six o'clock rolls around. Everybody's waiting. It's like 4,000 people in chat waiting for Chris Hansen to go live. Doesn't happen. 30, 40 minutes later, still nothing. Mods check in and they say they did an entire show and then they restarted the computers, I guess for whatever reason, because they don't know that in streaming you don't restart your computer right before you go live. And uh, a Windows update went in. A major Windows update was installed. So that's what the initial delay was. Uh, Chris Hansen says it was, that was, that was verbatim from the mods of the channel. They said that that's what happened. Um, the <laughs> Windows update, just fucking bo boomer streamer getting all fucked up. Uh, now the rest of this conversation really plays down, really plays down the hype. Cause the hype was that, holy shit, Chris Hansen is going to take down Ice Poseidon. But in this, in this video, this 15 minute video or so, uh, he basically explains that nothing is clear cut, nothing, no, no evidence that he's received has been clear cut to point that Ice Poseidon has had any kind of, um, uh, in person or even, I guess, digital, um, uh, uh si situations that he shouldn't be in with, with minors. Uh, there is one situation. There was one, uh, uh, uh person who presented themselves as 13, I guess, and turns out she was 19 or something for reasons I don't fucking know. Half the shit that happens on YouTube IRL, I feel like, how old am I? Like, do I not just fucking get it? <laughs> Maybe that's the case. Uh, it is. It's, it, it's, it's fucking weird. But the show didn't happen. He said, at the end of this, he said that tomorrow, which was Thursday, he was going to announce when they were going to do the video, uh, and that didn't happen. He actually hasn't said anything about it since then. It's now Friday. Um, and yeah, it's just, uh, it basically nothing ever came of it. We don't know if anything's going to happen. Uh, I have, I have a, a friend who is convinced that, uh, that ICE, ICE's lawyers got a hold of this and they were on the phone when they talked earlier this day. Um, and, and if you don't think that ICE has lawyers, you're s sadly mistaken. Uh, it's so who knows what happened, but if Chris Hansen's going to break into the YouTube streaming realm with this show, he too has to be very careful with how he approaches things. Uh, having a show like Hansen versus predators and bringing people on who are not necessarily alleged or even con convicted or even alleged predators, um, could, I mean, that's, that's, that's something that could hurt him in the long run, not necessarily legally because people would volunteer and say, Oh yeah, you know, I'll come on your show. It's fine. Right. They'll just go on the show, but you're not going to get as many people volunteer to go on. Like, like, I mean, really, like I said, you're not going to get a ton of people volunteering to go on, on uh Hanson versus the predators <laughs> at all. So, so yeah. Um, a defamation of character by show name, right? Yeah. It turns into a slander issue. Yeah. But, but don't forget they're, they're volunteering themselves to go on the show. Right. So, that that's slander and defamation character is not really gonna 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 gonna. I, now the tweet that he sent out where he said, you know, is this happening or something, something, something like that? That's something that could be used in like a defamation of character uh, case. But even then, it was a question that he posed: Is he a shock jock or is something darker going on? Da 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 da. Right. But but if Chris Hansen is seriously gonna try to break into streaming. He's not going to do it with that, with that kind of uh, approach. Chris Hansen's show will probably work. Uh, if he's actually looking for people to be on the show uh, and overgoing after specific people, though. Turns out he's an outstanding guy. That's what it felt like when you watched the video, actually. Anything that has host versus bad objective 
Uh, so adjective in the name would be accusing the guest to be bad adjective. Absolutely. Yeah. But again, if you if you volunteer yourself to go on the show, then you're kind of setting that aside. You're saying that it's okay for me to go on that show, regardless of what the name is. So, um, but yeah, so uh, I guess you guys are caught up on the latest YouTube IRL drama. It's fucking weird. And, and the reason why I bring this up on the show is because I mentioned it throughout the week and most everybody was like, what? <laughs> what the fuck? So I am very happy to be the one to present to you uh, the absurdities that occur on other streaming platforms outside of Twitch. It's, it's the fucking Wild West, man. It really, really is. What is it, talk show mode? Came here for Undead Road Classic Hijinks. Well, you missed it already. We talked about it already. Um, anything that, sorry, uh, does that mean food is bad in man versus food? <gasps> is food a bad adjective, though? Don't think so. All right. Next up, speaking of underage, Peggy Ratings versus NBA 2K20. Yeah. So, so. That was a terrible transition, wasn't it? Um, <laughs> So NBA 2K20 has a uh, has a Peggy rating of three, meaning that it is uh, well. I mean that means that anybody over the age of three should be uh, allowed to play the game, right? Or I guess purchase the game. So a three year old go in and purchase the game if they want to. Uh, the ratings are ratings are BS sandwich anyway has has gambling in it, right? So let's talk about that for a minute. Uh, so somebody wrote in to uh, to to Peggy the Peggy, uh, uh, I guess site and somebody responded peggy consumer affairs responded and said thanks for your email we have seen the announcement trailer for nba 2k20 and noticed the controversy has caused we feel it is important to carefully explain what when certain content is triggering the gambling descriptor in the peggy system so you're probably wondering why does why does a basketball game have gambling in it what kind of gambling could it possibly have that would trigger this kind of response well, let's go ahead and hop in and take a look. Let's go to maybe this part right here that has an actual slot machine. Oh, oh my God, yes, I won, right? What's next? What else do we have? Uh, we already have the typical, what is it? No fucking way, yeah. Oh, hey, look at it, spin the wheel. Oh, 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 big bucks, no whammies. Oh shit, and he won. Not gambling, not gambling. What else has he got? What is it? he got? We got a couple more here. Let me see. Da, 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 da. We have we have the usual packs. This whole video basically just shows all, 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 all of the various types of uh, loot box style mechanics. Uh, and I mean, it's everywhere in this whole video. You almost wonder if the game is about gambling, and the basketball part is just there as a vehicle for delivery of these, uh, of these different types of gambling methods. Uh, there's even, there's even a, uh, let's see, we got a uh, triple threat, total wins, spin the wheel here. Uh, we have a uh, Plinko here. You can play Plinko. Not necessarily gambling, I guess, but there are available prizes on the left-hand side. Why would you ever, dude, it, the whole video is just this. It's just, the, it's only two minutes long. It's just this. This is the, yeah, this is the gameplay video, okay? This is, this is a 2019 gameplay video. Here's all the different ways we can take your money. Uh, I mean, look at the, look at the ratings on this thing. 22,000 down, 3.6 up. Hmm. Hmm. Why would you, yeah, why would you, why would you do that? So somebody wrote in and Peggy responded and they said, yeah, this is, this is something that we're talking about internally. Uh, they even they even notice the trailer includes imagery that is general generally known from casinos, Wheel of Fortune, slot machines. Use this sort of mechanic to select an item or character or character or action uh, by by chance is not the same as teaching how to gamble for money in a casino. So by that logic, and they have acknowledged that they are talking about this internally, whether or not this is something they should change or, or take a different approach or something. But they're basically saying that yeah, no, it, it has these things, but it doesn't really teach you how to gamble. It doesn't really teach you how to, how to gamble. So they're going to give it a, a rating of, uh, uh, of uh, Peggy 3. But then you go into their Peggy ratings list. Look up Pokemon. 7. Pokemon, let's go Eevee. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 7. 12. What the fuck happened with Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow? And, I guess, Red Bundle. That's 12. So, turns out, when you click on it, it says... 
The game was rated Peggy 12 for moving images that encourages the use of games of chance that are played as a traditional means of gambling. And so I went to go find an example of that. And here it is. This gets you a Peggy rating of 12. This. Meanwhile, this gets you a Peggy rating of three. How does that fucking happen? Admittedly, you can bet coins in this game. We don't know, and even, even the, uh, uh, the Peggy folks don't know anything outside of the trailer that was released and other, other things where they you know, could, could attribute you know, various uh, 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 ratings to. Um, but they don't have the full game, so they don't know if there's any kind of coin, virtual, or otherwise being exchanged in order to play these games. I am fairly certain that they have monetized in 2019 a EA game uh, where you have to exchange real money currency for something in the game. Somehow these, somehow these slot machines and Plinko machines, all this stuff will come into play, probably related to money that you pay into the game. So, <laughs> NBA 2K20 is not out yet. Uh, it shows tokens up right corner of the screen. Yeah, no, I know, no, I, I know that, <laughs> okay, uh, maybe I was being a little too facetious. Uh, I know that there's uh, real money transactions in an EA game in 2019. I know. Uh, it's, it's, it's how the money goes into the system and then how that applies to the, um, uh, uh, oh, I'm sorry, yes, yeah, uh, this isn't EA, sorry, 2K, 2K. Um, but how that money goes from your wallet into in-game currency and then thrown into uh, 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 into the slot machine system. So I guess we won't know until the game releases. But as of right now, this is not gambling. This is fine. This is totally fine. But this is a fucking hazard. A hazard to younglings everywhere. Just can't have it. Just can't have it. Unbelievable. And this is the re-release, by the way. Three, there's a 3DS re-release um, <laughs> of the game. So the, this, the game is like Game Boy. Classic Game Boy. It's ridiculous. Pokemon Blue ruined my life. Uh, you know, arguing against loot box hysteria is kind of my thing, but Peggy makes it harder with that inconsistency. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I know. Oh, man. So... I will absolutely be continuing to follow this story. I'll continue to follow this story and let you guys know what happens because uh, it does seem weird that uh, this level of inconsistency can, inconsistency can happen. But again, they have acknowledged that they are talking about this internally. So we'll see. Uh, I still understand how people call loot boxes a gamble. You can't lose. It isn't a game of blackjack where the dealer in the casino could take your money and give you nothing. At least the loot box gives you a crap reward. You imagine going to the tables in Vegas and they give you like, they give you like a cashew or some shit like that when you lose. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Technically, not gambling, I guess. You still won something. <sighs> in the casino, you get free drinks. That's true. You do get free drinks in a casino. Is that how, is that how they get around it being gambling? No one ever walks into a, into a casino and say, this is not gambling. A oh boy, a cashew. In other news, I guess speaking of loot boxes, uh, in other news, Overwatch is coming to Switch. Are you guys excited about that? There's a trailer. There's a Twitter. There's a tweet. Most everybody knew about it ahead of time because there was a leak that uh, the uh, uh, a case, I guess a Switch case, for the uh, uh, that was Overwatch themed, was released early. And so that kind of ruined the surprise. Oh gosh, oh geez, I don't even hear this stuff. Uh, it does have 30 FPS while docked. I don't know what the, uh, the frame rate is undocked. And it does have tilt assisted aiming, which I've heard is actually really good. Don't knock it because I've heard it's actually really good. Um, not in Overwatch, but just in other games in general. Uh, 
The game is going to be $40, not $60. For whatever reason, I'm not quite sure. Uh, and it will have voice comm support. It's a bit awkward when it's docked, but you can just plug in your headphones or your headset into the top and it'll work fine, apparently. So that's, that right there, I thought was pretty interesting. But otherwise, it's just Overwatch on mobile. Can you use the weird circle thing? Uh, they teased yesterday with it. I, oh, I didn't, I didn't see that actually. Uh, Blizzard releases Overwatch for the Nintendo Switch, but still can't figure out how to release it for Mac OS. Your corporate BS right there. I, I mean, I, I would argue that there's probably more people on Switch. Switch is like the new hotness. So I get why everyone's trying to make everything work for Switch. Watch again. Now nah, I think we're good. <laughs> I think we're good. Move on to the next thing. Uh, so not use the Nintendo mobile app. Oh, God, no, actually, it's supposed to not. It's supposed to use internal voice comms. So we'll see. Uh, we don't have any, we have no information on there being any kind of cross play. We could pretty much take that as there won't be any kind of cr cr cross play because that's something that they would probably brag about uh, was having cross play. Um, and so, yeah, still on Saturday's Activision Blizzard giving us Activision game for free when people paid $60 for it. Mm. Yeah. So, those of you guys who are Switch owners, you can buy Overwatch again. No, no mention of being able to, to link your accounts or anything like that yet. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and assume it's not a thing. <laughs> it's probably not a thing. For the third or fourth time. Yes, you could buy it again. <laughs> again, again, again. Um, next up. Next up. <gasps> Wait, don't you fucking play. Don't you fucking play, GameSpot. Okay, good. Next up. Randy. Weird about the, the, the thing, but let's go ahead and just... Yeah, we got some new Randy news. Well, it's like, it's kind of old now, but we got some new Randy news. <laughs> Again? Again? Oh, was just, jeez. So, Gearbox CEO Randy Pitchford accused of contempt in latest court filing. Uh, so, it's magic. Uh, so this is uh, a pretty short, pretty small update on the ongoing case against uh, Randy Pitchford, Gearbox, all that stuff. Uh, the case that's being filed now is, or the latest court, court filing, is in regards to Randy Pitchford and Gearbox not submitting the um, documents requested of them by the court. Essentially, discovery abuse and contempt. Um, there were a number of delays. They requested these documents. And there was a number of delays. They got a 30-day extension. That 30-day extension uh, uh, expired on August 2nd. And they've decided to go ahead and uh, uh, file again to basically put Randy Pitchford in, uh, in contempt of uh, court, uh, for, for basically not submitting the documents requested of them by the court. So the hole just gets deeper for Randy Prick, prick Fork <laughs> Pitchford. Uh, and I mean, that's really, that's really where we're at right now is this just layers and layers of, <laughs> of accusations that just keep on coming. And he even says, uh, what did he say? He say, uh, uh, um, internet, he says, uh, in response to, is the USB stick falling out, uh, or has the internet moved on now? And Pitchford replied, internet is fine. All they care about is if my next video game is good or not. So... I guess, I guess if Borderlands 3 is amazing, then everyone's going to forget about all these court filings and cases and all that good stuff, right? We're just going to move right along. You know what? Hey, at least he made a good game. At least he made a good game. <sighs> it's pretty, it, yeah, I mean, it, it, you're right, Zeljus. It's like, for me, I don't give a fuck about Borderlands 3, right? I don't. I will not forget <laughs> all, this, all this drama that happens. Uh, but I could totally say some folks would be like, oh, this is a great game. I love Randy Pitchford. This is awesome. A uh, good game that is exclusive to Epic, so no one cares. There's a certain YouTube channel, I am sure, who won't forget about it. Yeah, that's right. That poor bastard. I wonder what happened to that guy. I wonder if he's made any, any Borderlands videos after having those PIs sent to his house. It says, uh, it says like these Randy guy got something to hide. Oh. Let's go and uh, let's go and ping Chris Hansen. Uh, <laughs> got to wait for them to fix all the bugs on Epic Borderlands Three. So, so yeah, we'll uh, we'll, we'll we'll wait for the reviews on that one. 
But man, Jesus. <sighs> hey, guess what? That's actually the end of news news. There, are, there is one more thing for those of you folks who are uh, uh, participating on, 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 on Twitch in any form. It is September. What does that mean? Well, for the month of September, all the way up through September 24th, uh, you get half off new subs. You get 10% bonus when you purchase bits up, up to 25 million bits. So if you try to purchase more than 25 million bits, I guess you can't really get the 10% bonus after that or something. Uh, and Subway will be going through and gifting random uh, viewers of random streams uh, subs. And also Subway is going to be launching its own channel. I don't know what Subway is going to be streaming on the channel. But yeah, <laughs> Subway's a genius. They don't get free sandwiches. I've been thinking about craving Subway all week. So they're doing something right. I tried Subway yesterday. It was, it was absolutely terrible. So good luck, Mo. I was going to get 26 million bits this afternoon. I know. See? God. Oh, I thought it was going to be Soldier Boy. Ah, uh, it's better. It is. It is. It is. All of you guys who are currently resubbing, I'm going to go ahead and unmute that shit. Say thank you to all of you guys who are uh, taking advantage of that oh, September. Baby. Stuck boy. Give me boxes. Give me death. Thank you so much. Everybody else, thank you so much. Subway going to stream underpaid teens half-assing shitty sandwich. Exactly. Yeah. I was, re I was oh, really baby. upset with my sandwich yesterday. I'm not going to lie. I was really upset with my sandwich yesterday. Merb Zing. I said that before we went live here. A bunch of you guys are converting over. I appreciate that. Thank you. My my things not my dashboard's not updating, so <laughs> no idea who's doing what. Ioka, hey, I'm back. Thank you so much. 18 months. Thank you for taking advantage of that sub subway September. Oh. And Pale Brew, just subscribe. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Uh, so that's where we're at for the news this week. It's been a strange one. I'm so happy we got to talk about Chris Hans. I get to put it on the thumbnail. <laughs> Immediately following the, the thumbnail that I had last week, actually, it's kind of a, uh, it's kind of interesting. Boy, it just tells a story, doesn't it? Uh, you have all your teens at Subways. All of ours are run by uh, Indians. They do a good job. Oh, oh. Uh, thank you so much for that, Ermi. Appreciate that. Uh, we talked about the best news. Yes, we did at the very beginning of the show. But let's go ahead and wrap things up. Thank you so much for watching and everybody that's here hanging out. Thank you again for co-hosting Uncle Chat, Auntie Chat, Chat. My name is Mike B, aka Phony. You can find me aka Mike B on Twitter, aka Mike B on Twitch. We're playing World of Warcraft pretty much until Oxygen Included pops back in the rotation and Cube World when it comes out, probably. And whatever else we squeeze in there. We'll see. Kaboom, baby. Bye, YouTube. Thank you so much, Agamonia. And thank you, everybody, for watching. <sighs> see ya.